Today, we are going to be looking at finite state morphology. The specific problem will be tokenization, and we will be solving the tokenization issue using the longest match operator. In this video, we will be working with the FOMA finite state toolkit. Documentation for what we'll be, what we'll be going through can be found on the FOMA webpage and also in the Finite State Morphology textbook by Beasley and Cartoonin. Let's consider the following example. Imagine that we're working with a language that has multi-character graphemes. A grapheme is a symbol, often a letter, but it can be a multi-character symbol. So in this language, imagine we have A, G, N, N, G, and G, H. So given these symbols, this language could have words such as ana, anga, aga, and so on. Now, the problem that we want to solve today is how to tokenize a sequence into the, the character boundaries. So we want to go from aga to that. We want to go from anga to So our task is going to be to put braces around each character to make it clear where the character boundaries are. To begin with, let's make the following assumption. Let's assume that we can tokenize these characters by doing a left to right longest match. So in other words, when we encounter A, that's the only thing it could be. When we encounter G, it could be a G or it could be the start of a GH. When we do a longest match, we will assume the longer of the two options, GH, followed by A. Let's try to implement this in FOMA. Let's start by defining our alphabet. This will be a finite state machine that we're giving a name. We get to choose the name and we're arbitrarily choosing it to be alphabet. The valid symbols in our language are A, unioned with G, unioned with N, unioned with N, G, unioned with G, H. Recall from the earlier videos and from the textbook and documentation that within the context of FOMA, the vertical bar is a reserved symbol for union, and the curly braces are reserved symbols that explode out the characters. So writing NG inside curly braces is equivalent to writing N followed by G. So in the underlying finite state machine, there will be an arc with an N and an arc with a G as opposed to treating NG as a monolithic multi-character symbol. 
which we don't want to do. There's our first machine. Let's load that up and see what it looks like. I'm going to hide the editor by using Control Z and then clear the screen using Control L. Next, I'm going to load FOMA. And if we recall, FOMA can load up a script. So if we pass FOMA the dash F flag with a script name, it will read the commands from the script, start up, and then quit. It's not quite what we want. What we want here is the dash L flag, which will allow us to read the commands from the script so we don't have to type them again, but then leave us at the interactive prompt. So FOMA dash L, and then the file name, which we call tokenize.foma. We can see that the FOMA environment correctly loaded our machine. And it says that that machine is defined, and it's called alphabet. It tells us how many bytes it takes up, how many states it has, how many arcs it has, and how many paths it has. We can look at the machine if we push it. Right now, there's no networks on the stack, but we can push alphabet onto the stack. and then view it. Here's our small machine representing the symbols in our alphabet. Notice that this machine only accepts one symbol at a time. It will not accept multiple symbols at a time, except if it's N followed by G. Then that's still only one symbol. So one symbol, either N, NG, G, GH, or A. Let's go back to our machine. Here's our FOMA file. The next thing that we want to do is to insert brackets. So let's define a new machine which we'll call insert brackets. This machine will use a special operator that represents right to left longest match. Here's an excerpt from the Finite State Morphology textbook describing the operator that we're going to be using. This is a longest match operator. This is a right arrow, left to right, longest match rule using this operator. A will represent a language. B represents what we're going to change it into. In this example, we're going to ignore the left and right context, so we won't need the double bars or the left to right. Here's the important part. Where the expression A, which in our case is the alphabet, can match the input in multiple ways, the rule conceptually matches left to right and replaces only the longest match at each step. Remember that I said that the curly braces are special characters reserved in FOMA. We're going to use FOMA's escape character, which is the percent sign, to allow us to use the literal open curly brace. So this represents the actual curly brace symbol. We're going to use the dot 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 notation, which means wherever something from here occurred, we are going to insert this, the left and the right context. So this is going to be an insertion operation. So the insert brackets will says anytime we find a symbol from our alphabet, 
we will do the longest match to find the longest symbol from our alphabet, and wherever that occurs, we will surround it with curly braces. Let's load this up and see what it see how it works. Let's push insert brackets and try it out. Does exactly what we wanted it to do. There's a problem. The language is actually a bit more complicated than this. So let's consider another word where there's potential ambiguity. In this word, do, should the word be tokenized as N followed by G followed by H or as NG followed by H or as N followed by GH? Let's see what the machine currently does. NG and A are correctly tokenized. However, if we recall from our machines, if we push alphabet and look at the pairs, H is not a letter. So, what should have happened, ideally, is that this word would have been tokenized as N followed by GH. The reason this happened is we did a longest match from left to right, leading us to say NG is a character, and then H is just left over. What we really need is actually the opposite direction. So we need a right to left longest match so that we get GH matching by doing the longest match from the right to the left and then N. Let's go back to our FOMA file and make some changes to allow this behavior. Our alphabet can remain the same. Our insert brackets is going to have to change. The R operation is going to reverse things. So this will take these values and reverse them. Let's look in FOMA to see how that works. So let's do a regular expression where we take alphabet and then reverse it. Notice that the individual symbols got reversed. So let's reverse the alphabet. And then, because things are reversed, we can do a left to right longest match. Inserting symbol, inserting the curly braces, and then reversing it again so that the ultimate result is in the correct expected order. There's going to be a problem with this involving the curly braces, but let's leave it at this and we'll see what that problem is. Let's push insert brackets and let's try tokenizing. This is not what we wanted. So what's the problem? Think about this for a moment. We have 
for each letter, close letter open. Closing brace, letter, opening brace. Closing brace, opening letter, opening brace. So what's going on? We've got our reversed symbols, and then this will correctly insert what we want, an opening curly brace and a closing curly brace. But then the reverse reverses things, and so we end up with the opposite of what we wanted. So we end up with the closing curly brace followed by the symbols from the alphabet followed by the opening curly brace. So to fix this, we can swap the order. This makes our rule look a little odd, but the behavior will be the one we want. There we go. Now, let's try this. And there we get the behavior that we want. This is the correct tokenization. Let's add one more wrinkle. In addition to being able to do this tokenization, let's make this a transducer so that we can transduce from the letters, not just to the tokenized symbols, but to their IPA equivalents. This will tell us as linguists how the word is pronounced. So let's write a little machine that will that will transduce from the letters to their IPA equivalents. So we'll call that Graphene to IPA. So what should this machine look like? Well, we want for each character, we want its IPA equivalent. For N, this isn't very interesting. For A, it's not very interesting. For G, G in this language is a voiced velar fricative, represented by this symbol. NG is represented by this symbol, and GH is represented by this symbol. So far, so good. What we're ultimately going to need, though, is to have the tokenized symbols go to the IPA. So if we go like this, and we assume we start with the alphabet, we utilize insert brackets to insert the brackets to do our tokenization for us, then if we compose insert brackets with this machine, then the upper side of this machine will need to match the lower side of this machine. In insert brackets, whenever we have A on the lower side, we won't just have A, we will have a literal open curly brace symbol followed by A, followed by a literal closed curly brace symbol. Let's put this 
inside square brackets to make that clear. And on the other side, we've got the IPA symbol. Put it in curly braces. That's not strictly necessary, but I think it looks good that way. Or what goes next? Same thing here. I'm going to make things align nicely. This isn't strictly necessary, but I think it will improve the readability. So there we go. So this machine, Graphene to IPA, will look for any of the following sequences. A inside curly braces, N inside curly braces, G inside curly braces, NG inside curly braces, or GH inside curly braces. And wherever that is found, it'll be replaced with the corresponding symbol. Now there's one more thing that this machine needs to be able to handle, which is multiples. The machine as written, graphing to IPA, will only accept one such symbol. But we want to accept a sequence of symbols, and so we'll use the clean star. Next, let's compose this. So let's write a machine that takes insert brackets and composes it with graphene to IPA. The result will be we can type in a word in the language and get out the corresponding sequence of IPA symbols. So let's try. The machine is already on the stack. And there we have the desired behavior.